At that time, I had no idea what I was seeing. It resembled nothing that I had ever heard described. It resembled plasmic energy. It had colors. It moved fast. It collected and then dispersed. But what it was, what he was, I am not sure even now. VALIS is an acronym. It stands for Vast Active Living Intelligence System. In other words, he thought that the artificial intelligence should be called VALIS. I know a lot of the communications he got were in a woman's voice. And uh, he ascribed this to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. I think for Phil, Vallis was a conduit to the information, not exactly to God himself, but to the information that would explain God in terms that he could understand. Because in, in our tradition, you cannot stand face to face with God. You would die. So you need an intermediary. And that would be the satellite voice or Vallis. He told me that God had intervened into reality and talked to him. Then he told me that, in fact, that wasn't what happened. It was simply an acid flashback, that he was deluded to think it was God. Then he told me, no, it was probably Soviet experiments with telepathy that had happened. And then he'd say, no, I think it was God. I thought that a lot of it was delusion. Um, I'm sorry to say that, but I did. I mean, he would get glimpses, and he believed those glimpses. He believed them with all his heart, like that hernia meant something. The girl with the fish sign meant something. There, I mean, this was all significant. I don't think he was sure how it fit together or what was going to happen or what he was supposed to do. I think he believed more often than not that it was God that had happened to him. And I think that it was God that had happened to him. I don't think it was an acid flashback or Soviet telepathy experiments. I think that in fact what happened was that God leaned down and spoke to Phil Dick. I've always felt and, and still do that if, if these are, things like this are the evidence that you base your convictions about reality upon, uh, you must have a very desperate need to, 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 to have some view of, of an alternate reality. Well, if you believe, as I do, that uh, people are aware of their impending deaths, that on some deep level they know they may be coming to the end of their lifetime, the need to find answers to lifelong questions in those circumstances becomes especially pressing and urgent. And so it's no mystery, I think, why Dick would take this process of projection, which has always been in his work, and find some kind of ultimate affirmation in that. Um, that science fiction becomes the ultimate reality. Well, what more validation would a science fiction writer need? As far as whether these visions really happened, they did really happen to Phil. But as Phil would say, what is reality? Or as a great Zen Buddhist once said, am I the man dreaming he's a butterfly or the butterfly dreaming that he's a man? Certainly it's accurate to say that from 74 until his death in 82, he was trying to find an answer to what had happened to him in March of 74. Phil became more and more absorbed with trying to understand the meaning of that flash when that pink ray zapped him in the eyes and he began to write things based on his theories about the meaning of that flash. For the rest of his life, he was trying to understand what happened to him, what God was trying to tell him, 
And um, I think that's what that whole exegesis was about. Exegesis is a word for writings that attempt to explain the scriptures, especially the Bible, but also the scriptures of other traditions like Hinduism and Islam and Buddhism. First you would examine possibility A, that it was something that somehow was consistent with the, the Buddhist uh, view of reality, and then he would see that something still didn't fit in with that, and then he would go on to something that would be maybe the, the Hindu version or something else. And so, you know, instead of having one coherent whole, you just had strata of, of different explanations that followed each other chronologically and in no particular order. He turned philosophical in the end. Now, either he went nuts or we just haven't got there yet. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see who's crazy, him or us. Fat later developed a theory that the universe is made out of information. He started keeping a journal, had been, in fact, secretly doing so for some time, the furtive act of a deranged person. The term journal is mine, not Fat's. His term was exegesis, a theological term meaning a piece of writing that explains or interprets a portion of scripture. When Phil explored the idea that someone was transmitting those visions to him, he couldn't decide whether it might be our government or Russian communists or whatever. During like 74 and 75, he received some puzzling, unexplained piece of paper in the mail. And he said that he had taken one look at it and instantly said, don't show it to me, it's a disinhibiting uh, signal. And on one particular day, Phil ran up the stairs and handed me this letter and told me to open it and read it, but not to let him see it, because he was afraid that it would be like that Queen of Diamonds in the Manchurian Candidate and put him into a trance where he would perform whatever his handlers had programmed him to do when they brainwashed him. He said he had gone to a socialist kindergarten and that all the kids there might have been sort of primed with hypnotic delayed bombs that they could be triggered to uh, do something about later in life. And this was a Xerox of a book review from a left-wing or communist newspaper but certain words were underlined, some of them in red and some of them in blue, and all the underlined words had to do with death, destruction, rotting, and that sort of thing. But he did apparently contact the FBI and said, I have this thing I received in the mail, I have reason to believe uh, it's bad business. Well, Phil really was paranoid, but on the other hand, that Xerox letter was very real. So it's hard to say that paranoia is the only explanation for what happened to him. Because you can be paranoid and have enemies. Haunted by his ideas and theories regarding his mystical experiences, once again, Philip K. Dick loses control of his domestic life. His marriage to Tessa starts to fall apart. Just in general, we were not getting along, so I left for one night. And before that night was over, Phil was in the hospital for attempted suicide. Apparently, he had tried to slash his wrists, but that didn't work. And he tried to swallow pills, but they can't, he, vomited them up, so he tried to run the car inside our garage with all the doors closed, but the car would not run. So he called the pharmacy trying to get a refill on one of his prescriptions, and the pharmacist figured out what was going on and called the paramedics. He knew 